and welcome to the August, it's going to be August, dang, life is flying by. The August edition of According to Pete. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm not going to answer any questions today. Mm -mm. I'm going to ask you questions. I am neck deep into a project. Little background, I've been taking glider lessons on and off for about a year-ish. And uh, I wanted to see if I could make a device or something that would give me uh, more information than the standard uh, Schweitzer 233 glider instruments give me. Two questions. I, I want to get your take on the viability of uh, creating a vario or a variometer uh, with only GPS data. Also, I want to discuss um, loggers. Hmm, what do I log this with? Uh, uh, and if I'm using analog sensors, then I got to use something that'll that will uh, record analog voltages and stick that in a file somewhere. But simultaneously, if I'm doing something with GPS or I've got other data that is not analog in nature, how do I put that all together? I want to see MSL and AGL. MSL is uh, altitude above sea level, okay? Um, AGL, above ground level. So uh, this is, if you were looking down from Colorado to California on the coast, that's how high you would be. Uh, at our airport, it's, um, eh, we set it for 5,300 every time, right? Uh, uh, AGL, above the ground. So you know, you know, when you gotta land <laughs> and how much altitude you have to play with before you get to land. Um, now this, I can pretty well get from GPS. Pressure altitude, and with that, density altitude. Um, these two things um, are good information because they tell you how the aircraft is going to act in the air. The more dense the air is, uh, the better affect your wings and control services work and such. Uh, the thinner the air, the higher the altitude, uh, the less so. Um, these uh, you can effectively get from a BMP 085, I remember that part, of course I did. So these are calculations, so between GPS and the BMP 085, uh, I should be able to get that action right there. Ground speed. Pete doesn't like high G loads. Now the people who are really good at flying gliders probably can just look out their window and go, oh, I can see that my wind speed is such because I'm not moving very fast. You know what, when I'm up in the air, I can't always tell how fast I'm going against the ground, okay? Um, so what the heck, I can get that information. Um, and then lastly, rate of climb slash descent, okay? Um, that's what the Vario does. This guy, I forgot to make the uh, GPS, I can get that. Vario, uh, my, my first thing was like, oh, I could just throw an accelerometer. You can't just throw an accelerometer at it. Are you kidding me? This thing's all over the place. So what you would really need is like a full IMU, except that I think you can do it with the GPS. Your altitude is given um, in the GPS in, in the standard NEMA sentences. So you should be able to do this. Uh, for my GPS, I got a GS407, GS407, and this is a U-Blox 6 part. Um, I never played with any of the U-Blox stuff. I'm a complete noob to this particular item. BMP 085 got that. Um, for this, I actually did grab uh, an ADXL uh, three, four, five, and I'll probably jam it in there just so I can see, like realistically, what kind of G forces I am experiencing. Um, but it's not going to give me rate of climb. That that ain't going to happen. I can see that now. Uh, besides those components, uh, I've got one of our graphic uh, LCD displays to put all the information onto. Uh, controlling with a Arduino Pro Mini. That's easy, right? Wait, coffee. Question one: GPS used as a Vario. All right. I, I, I looked on a few forums and what I found was that uh, certain people were saying like, oh, it's completely inaccurate. You can't possibly use GPS for Vario. Um, but 
At the same time, I plugged in my GS407 and I watched the data go for a, a, a fairly long time. Now, I will grant you that over the course of uh, even a minute or even 30 seconds or, or even less, um, the altitude reading can vary by quite a bit, like tens of meters in some cases. But going from, from read to read, like every second there's a new reading. And in the case of the GS407, you can jack it up to four reads per second, so four hertz. It's only varying by plus or minus about 20 centimeters, which is not too terribly bad. I had to write this down, right? At 100 feet per minute, like uh, in, in terms of like in the aircraft, 100 feet per minute is like, well, it's a, it's a low increment of either descent or ascent, okay? Um, 100 feet per minute equates to about 51 centimeters per second. So a variance of 20 centimeters is kind of in the noise, all right? Now, if you take a rolling average of these things and update every second, you ought to be able to get a fairly decent indicator of, of how much you're either climbing or descending, okay? And if you actually jack it up to, you know, four hertz and keep a rolling average of that, this, I think this should be doable. Now, further, I would say that I went looking and a time constant on uh, a Vario like this is about one and a half seconds. That's usually, that, that, that's considered pretty good. Um, well, heck, I can get that. I mean, in a half, a second and a half, can I, you know, achieve some kind of, yeah, I think I can. So, um, but the question, the question is, what do you think? Is this stupid? I mean, has somebody done this, right? Um, and I think I've seen some stuff online. I've seen a few instruments and I think it's doable. Um, and I think some are actually doing it and they charge like $1,500 or more for this. It's just complete nonsense, except that if you're going to base your life or risk your life on this, yeah, maybe they want some more money to say, yeah, 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 you can trust our gear. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw some stuff together and solder it up and see if it works. Let's talk about logging. This is question two. When I originally started doing this, uh, it, it seemed to me like, okay, well, if I'm gonna have an accelerometer and I'm gonna have that uh, barometric pressure sensor and there might be some analog stuff and I might have to do some analog stuff, turns out I don't. Um, in fact, both, uh, even if I was using the AD, ADXL345, which I'm not, uh, given the information I gave you before, um, they, they're both either I2C or SPI, right? And that equates to, um, you know, digital data. But when I started this, I was thinking I was going to have to have something some way, if I wanted to log anything at all, I was going to have to have something that was doing both, um, serial logging, like text, and analog logging, and stuff it into a file um, in, in, in some kind of meaningful way. Now, we've got a few different loggers to choose from. Uh, one is the open log, and it is a serial logger. And the other is, um, and these are the ones, we've still got the micro log, but I'm not talking about that one. Uh, we've also got uh, the logomatic, which is a very old product that we've had for a very long time. The logomatic will do either text logging, serial logging, or it will do analog and dump that to a file. Um, I don't, if, if memory serves, it won't do both simultaneously. You are either logging text or you are logging analog stuff to a file. Won't do both. So in the beginning of this, I was like, hmm, well, how am I going to do that? Now, as I got on with the project, uh, you know, everything's digital and I can just dump all this to a file and delimit it in some fashion and just dump it to an open log. And I think that'll work pretty well. But the question is, if you could do it any way that you wanted, if you had, or if you were, if you, if you were making a logger that would do both analog and, and serial logging, how would you do it? Or is it even necessary, right? Because I found, like, like I said, for my own purposes, it looks like, you know, all of this is going to end up as, you know, digital data anyway. And I can just throw it in, throw it in a text file, delimit it in some fashion, and the open log will take care of it. But what if I wanted to mix text and analog? Is it even necessary? Um, it could be that it's obsolete at this point. Why bother, you know? Uh, when you can get something that's as simple as the open log and just plug it into a UART and you're done, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe the logomatic is not worth having anymore. So, 
The question, question two, if you could design a logger, how would you do it? This is my uh, graphic LCD and it's backpack. Here's my Pro Mini that I have created a little header for and I, you gotta jump across power and ground and I, I do stuff like this. Here's my GS407 mounted with double-sided sticky foamy tape and uh, I got nothing else on it so far. Um, the GS407, I got one of these long uh, data cables. I've made it to uh, my USB so I can look at it and uh, sort of play with it and get comfy with U-blocks a little bit. I know I gotta have the BMP085 and I got uh, my SPI slash I2C pins down here. So am I gonna mount it right off those pins? Eh, probably not, I might like, yeah, I don't really know how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make it up as I go. Um, now, ultimately, uh, assuming this would go in an aircraft in some fashion that they're going to let me put it in the aircraft, uh, it might go in a little enclosure with some Velcro. No, they're not gonna let me put Velcro in the glider. Probably not. Uh, maybe it'll hang around my neck. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, but first things first, I gotta play with some toys. That is the uh, full sum of what I have to offer you guys this time. Any questions or comments, you can put in the comment section down there. Um, or you can submit them to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line. So until September, thanks, and I'll see ya. You know, I like hovering over a little board like this because it's like I'm playing God. Hello, little board. I'm going to crush you.